Kopf. I'm being smeared. The victim card again. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. One of the numerous advantages of my work is that it provides you with the ability to predict what a narcissist is likely to do next. By accessing my detailed work through blog articles and this, I dissect the behaviours of the different sub-schools of narcissists to enable the dynamic that occurs between the narcissist and certain appliances within the fuel matrix with variations taken into account for the particular sub-school. The testimonials bear witness to the accuracy of this work, enabling people to find freedom, to stop being abused, to evade the difficulties that once plagued their lives. This, of course, is just as applicable. You know that Harry's wife has faced some serious problems in the last few days. Spotify has axed her, as the loss of money associated with that. There's the deal with Dior that doesn't appear to be a deal with Dior. There is the criticism that has come forth from Bill Simmons and others. All of this amounts to repeated threats to her control, either through wounding or chat. She is under attack, not a calculated or coordinated form of attack, but quite simply the consequence of her need for control and the way that she looks at the world. You know from my work, axing of the contract would wound her. You know from my work that Bill Simmons' comments amount to challenge fuel. Both of those things challenge her need for control. And you also know from my work that her response is what three options are available, selected unconsciously and instinctively by her narcissism. Either one, hoover the individual's for the purposes of asserting control over them. This invariably is never an option for Harry's wife when it comes to large-scale criticisms or reportage of her failings, because there are simply too many news outlets, simply too many individuals to try and nullify their efforts to control. Thus, asserting control directly is often not an option that's available to her in such circumstances. Another option, of course, is to stay in a position of withdrawal, dismissing the individuals, dismissing the news organisations as haters and racists. Or, what is the second assertion of control, indirect, is to complain about her treatment, dole out a pity play in the expectation that there still will be some sympathetic voices out there which will say, yes, poor you, Harry's wife, these Hating, flown fecked mouth, swivel eyed bigot racists are attacking and smearing you once again. Poor, poor Harry's wife. Boo, 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 de dooms. With the predictability of the sun rising in the east, these repeated threats to the control of Harry's wife have been met with what? Yes, the indirect assertion of control with the release of PR puff pieces for the purposes of causing people to be sympathetic to her. And what does she do? She cries foul. She does not state, I realise that I am boring and bland and my podcast series was duller than watching paint to dry and it's no surprise that Spotify got pissed off with me because I'm a lazy grifter. Of course, she will not recognise that. The narcissism will not allow her to do so. Instead, it puts an arm around her and whispers in her ear, They're smearing you, dear. Those horrible Spotify people. It's all part of a smear. And when Bill Simmons comments, as he did, and he's perfectly entitled to do so, once again, based upon her behaviour, the narcissism whispers in her ear, You're being smeared again. And when there are all the various comments about the Dior deal that never was, again, the paranoia links up and the narcissism whispers in her ear, see, it's all part of this smear campaign against you. 
And thus, with the narcissism telling her that she's being smeared, that she is the victim in all of this, she is thus motivated to ensure that a PR puff piece, at least one and probably more, is generated for the purposes of asserting control indirectly. And, lo and behold, what occurs? An article in Gracia which states, There's a new Harry's Wife smear campaign on the rise. There you are. As my work predicts, she faces threats to control. She seeks to nullify the control. It's done through an indirect assertion of control, issuing a PR puff piece, alleging that she's the victim. She's the victim of a smear campaign. This is not a smear campaign. Bill Simmons hasn't got together with the other executives at Spotify and the editors of new papers and the general public to say, hey, guess what, gang? Albeit, perhaps it would have to be boomed out over a public control creating in stadiums around the world if there was such a conspiracy. Let's get together and smear Harry's wife. It isn't a smear campaign. What it is, is the reaction once again to her behaviour. The reaction minded individuals see that she has fucked up and commented as such. And many revel in her misfortune because they simply don't like her as a consequence of her grifting ways. Her pity plays, her smearing of other people, her nastiness, and they sense justice at long last. But Harry's wife can't appreciate any of that as a narcissist. Oh, no, no, no. Instead, poor me. I'm being smeared. And thus Grazia runs to her aid by telling us there's a new Harry's wife smear campaign on the rise. Georgia Aspinall writes, They say bad things come in threes, but for Harry's wife that feels less of a superstitious happening and more of a targeted attack. This morning, following the news that she and Prince Harry had parted ways with Spotify, it was reported that Harry's wife's heavily rumoured deal with Dior is not happening, and at the same time, she's being torn apart for apparently faking interviews on her Archetypes podcast. Thus, in the first paragraph, the recent threats to control are all being attacked as part of trying to nullify them. Cue the endless tirade of sensational headlines. Harry's wife is not signing big money Dior fashion deal, despite Spotify acts. One reads, Why Spotify's big bet on Harry's wife fell flat in other states. Grifter, Harry's wife may have faked her podcast interview. A third claims. Reading them, and the many similar, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Harry's wife is in the midst of a full-on career meltdown. The stories about Spotify report rumours that she and Harry were sacked for not producing enough content. The headlines about Dior infer the luxury French fashion house have fobbed Harry's wife off much to her dismay. And those faking archetypes interview claims further perpetuate the fraud narrative against her first began. Victim card bringing up the past. So, allow us to clear a few things up. And this is where the indirect assertion of control comes in. The nullification of the first Dior. Contrary to the headlines implying there was some kind of snub, both the Sussexes and Dior have come out to say there was never any truth to the rumours of a sponsorship deal between them. A source at Dior told The Telegraph that their team are nonplussed as how to the story came about, while a spokesperson for Prince Harry and Harry's wife confirmed that the rumours are simply not true. Ah! Given the fact that we know that Harry's wife leaks information to the press, it's more than likely that she started the Dior rumours. And then, of course, Dior said, don't know what you're fucking talking about. Placed it more politely. And then, of course, when another attempt to garner a residual benefit on fuels, there's naturally the, oh, the, it's not true. Um, there was never any deal. Well, that is true. There never was. But you, Harry's wife, tried to make it happen. Grazia continues, They were always speculation in the first place then, and yet somehow by merely confirming the speculation was misplaced, Harry's wife is at the centre of unnecessary headlines, inferring she's been rebuffed, rebuffed by a brand she's known to adore. Next, Archetypes. The award-winning podcast that once unseated Joe Rogan's 
Spotify's consistently most listened to podcast, Top Spot, would, as per very normal podcasting production, have a large team that contributes to bringing content together. That's what producers are for. They produce content. And yet, when you break down the headline saying Harry's wife faked interviews with guests, you'll see that they're simply referring to the fact that producers on the show sometimes conducted interviews with guests and Harry's wife would dub her voice over questions afterwards. Oh, so that's all right then. The clear impression that's given is that she's the one that's conducted the interviews. Therefore, it's clear that she hasn't. Here, there is an actual admission that she has done the very thing that she's accused of, but she just dismisses it as, what are you all getting worked up about? This is just the way that content is produced. Yes, but you, Harry's wife, made it seem as if you were the one that interview when you were not. Why didn't you have a disclaimer at the introduction to say some of these interviews were conducted by producers rather than Harry's wife? The f excellent example, actually admitting what they've been accused of, but then just dismissing it as what's the brouhaha, brouhaha about. The article continues by explaining any involved in production, I tell you, it's not out of the norm for producers to help in people to be dubbed recorded as of the same for TV production. It might not be typical for the content to then be put out as if it's a conversation, but with someone as high profile and busy as Harry's wife, ha! Busy. One hour a week with Archwell, really? We can surely make allowances for the occasional dub voiceover. No. She's lied again. It certainly doesn't warrant a barrage of headlines called her a fake, nor is it even new information. Journalist Alison Yarrow revealed last year that her interview on the show was conducted by producer Farah Safari. Safafi. So why has it come up now? Why has it been spun in such a foul way? It's come up now because she's just been axed from Spotify. This journalist, of course, really is attempting to defend the indefensible. And to any reasonably minded individual reading this article or listening to what I'm saying, rather than go... Do you know what? That's actually changed my mind. She's absolutely right. She hasn't done anything wrong. You're more likely to think not only has she faked her role in these interviews, she's now trying to make out that there's nothing wrong with it. She doubles down on her idiocy, which of course is typical of the middle mid-range narcissism of Harry's wife. The article continues, finally, the Spotify deal. This is certainly more complex. While initially releasing a joint statement that the Sussexes and Spotify had mutually agreed to part ways and are proud of the series they made together, Spotify's head of podcast innovation and monetization, Bill Simmons, went on to refer to Harry and Harry's wife as fucking grifters, fueling speculation that the couple did not meet Spotify's productivity benchmark for the £18 million deal. Simmons pointed to Harry in particular, saying on his podcast, the Bill Simmons podcast, I have got to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try and help him with the podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. One should note that he had also previously expressed resentment at having to work with Harry at all. In a January 2022 episode of his podcast, he said, You live in fucking Monty's shit show, and you just sell documentaries and podcasts. And nobody cares what you have to say about anything unless you talk about the royal family and you just complain about them. Not exactly their biggest fan anyway, then. Well, indeed. But that doesn't make him wrong about what he said. But what stands out most to me is Simmons' issue with Harry in particular. And yet Harry's wife is bearing the brunt of the negative headlines about the deal falling through. The woman whose podcast won awards... Hmm acquired legendary guests like Mariah Carey and Serena Williams, and debuted, debuted to an estimated 11 million-plus listeners. While listening figures aren't released, Joe Rogan's podcast is estimated to be heard by an average of 11 million Spotify users per episode. An archetype threw him off the top podcast spot on Spotify just two days after the first episode dropped. Yes, but we all know why people were listening in as a grudge listen. It seems unfair. Oh, dear. Poor, poor Harry's wife. It's all so unfair. It seems unfair that Harry's wife's work is being criticised when the Duchess created one of the most listened-to podcasts across the entire streaming platform. 
Few stories also mention the many other reasons the Sussexes could have parted ways with Spotify, including the suggestion by some experts that Harry and Harry's wife are following in Barack and Michelle Obama's footsteps, who ended their contract with Spotify last week, allegedly last year, allegedly due to the exclusivity element of the contract. They didn't want their podcast to only be available on Spotify. Yes, we know what exclusivity means. Thank you very much. Of course, what this is, is Harry's wife again suggesting that she is like the Obamas, character trait acquisition, and claiming that it's unfair to be criticised. What this also doesn't do is talk about how those listeners soon dropped off once the grudge listeners had had their fill of laughing at her. The article continues by explaining the Obamas certainly didn't face the same level of scrutiny when they parted ways with Spotify. Rather, headlines imply the complete opposite power dynamic, that the Obamas were the ones doing the ditching as opposed to the other way around. Well, you know why that is? Grazia, it's because the Obamas are not as disliked as Harry's wife. And why is Harry's wife disliked? Because of the way she behaves. Grazia then asks, why is it then that whenever the Sussexes make a business move or announce new work, the headlines are always skewed in such a negative light? Because people don't like them. It's not rocket science. And more importantly, why is it always implied that Harry's wife is someone to, somehow to blame or the one who's been snubbed? Because she lies. Because of the way that she behaves. Because she is a narcissist that causes problems. That's why she is to blame. The most recent batch of three stories have all the marks of yet another smear campaign towards the mother of two. No. They are simply detailing what has happened. From court cases with tabloids to Netflix documentaries about their decision to step back as senior royals and flee Britain, it is worth noting that the couple have gone to great length to demonstrate the emotional impact of this kind of relentless negativity and the endless attempts to make Harry's wife seem manipulative or fraudulent. Not to make her seem. Not to make her seem. She is. The negativity is because, and this journalist may know this but still has to write this because it's a PR piece for the Sussexes. She is a narcissist. Harry is a victim and now a willing volunteer that has entered into the awful shared fantasy. There is legion evidence that demonstrates that she's a liar, that she's manipulative, that she revises history, that she smears, that she plays the race card, that she plays the victim card, that it's never her fault, that it's always somebody else's fault. There is a legion of evidence that demonstrates she, she is a talentless nobody who has only appeared on people's radars as a consequence of the man that she married. There is legion evidence that demonstrates that she says things and never follows them up with action. There is a legion of evidence that shows her opportunism driven by her narcissism. To pose these questions as Grazia does simply demonstrates with huge transparency that this is a put-up job in an attempt to try and negate the threats to control posed by recent events. Rather than stay quiet and shut up and ride it out, Instead, Harry's wife bristling in Monty Shit Show. How dare these people talk about me this way? Presses the button for the relevant supine publication to put out a puff piece in order to defend her. And all it does is make it worse. Because there is no defence. The only defence that's being run is it's not her fault, you're all nasty. It's not her fault. You're smearing her. And yet, there is no evidence to support that. Not only do people see the failure and her culpability in that regard, but then to try and suggest, it's not my fault I'm being picked on, is not only the weary excuse that she invariably trots out, but it has no foundation in fact. And thus, Harry's wife once again demonstrates, with the usual predictability, the threats to control that have occurred, her need to nullify those threats to control, and also the way that she does so in a manner 
which enables us to see her narcissism writ large and that the credibility that she believes that she has simply does not exist. Once again, she cries foul, claiming that she is being smeared and plays the victim card once again. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.